story to tell you. Ironically enough, this is the story that I started with in the great quitting of January 2010. For those who know me, that, you know that's where my whole thing started. The story goes, and I'm sure you've all seen it, that you have a fly in a room. And he flies at the window, and he just keeps going. Splat! Comes back. Keeps going. Hit, hit, hit. And you watch the fly and you think, there's a door right there. Not three feet away, open. There's a door. But no, the fly doesn't see that. The fly keeps hitting himself over and over and over again until eventually he's dead on the windowsill. In January 2010, that's what I felt like. I'd had six MLMs, vastly unsuccessful at all of them. Um, and I was feeling like the fly, vaguely concussed, didn't know what I was doing. I quit. But here's the difference. I quit on that journey, but I didn't quit on myself. I turned around and I sat on the windowsill and I was watching. And I looked at everything I knew how to do. See, this is very important. And the reason that I, well, first I have to tell you, the great quitting is all Diane's fault. <laughs> Just so you know, I want it on record, it's all Diane Hoffman's fault. Because I was on a public call, and I started telling her exactly why I couldn't do all the stuff. She told me, well, I didn't have a whole lot of debt, and I was way comfortable, and I didn't, I really didn't know how to do this. This is from an actress who's very used to taking direction. See, this is a big difference. I can take direction. I can follow instructions. If you don't give me directions and instructions, I'll just stand here and make the place look pretty. <laughs> so Diane said, you will not grow unless you stop making excuses. On a public call. On a public call. <laughs> so I hung up really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat on the windowsill. <laughs> the point was, at that point, I was quite aware that I wasn't the only one who felt that way. More often than not, as much as we think we are the center of the universe, and if I didn't have a cord, I would do the whole little pirouette thing, we are the center of our own universes, we are not that different. The people that you need to talk to are out there because they're so similar to you, or similar to where you were a year or two ago. So sitting on the windowsill means that you can look at what you can do, and you can look at what's possible. Another story for you. You know when Alice falls down the rabbit hole and she lands in that circular room with all the doors? You notice how our tendency is to rush at every door, shake it until we try and open it, and then when we do find one that we open, we barge through? Why does nobody think, I'll try all the other doors first and see which one's the best one? Why do we always go barging in thinking it's the one and only way? It doesn't have to be that way. If you spend time sitting on your windowsill, or if you spend time turning around, not necessarily forever, I'm not saying quit, but there may be some things that you've been banging your head against a wall. And now's the time with all this information that you've got to sit on your windowsill for a little bit and go, what if I look behind that door and that door? and that door, and I leave them all open a little bit. The best one will show, and there'll be a crowd behind one going, hey, come over here, and there'll be another one with a big monster, and you'll go, <laughs> maybe not. It's that kind of a feeling. It's quitting, but not stopping. Diane paid me a huge compliment um, a little while ago on a call about the fact that I don't stop. I'd never actually realized that about myself. I might change direction. But I actually not, not, and not change direction to the point that I'm now heading off that way, whereas I was heading over there. It's more a jump to the left, a step to the right, and then a few more steps forward. I'm opening doors in a circular room. And I can always come back into the room and go out another door. Mm -hmm. But if you go barging off into the one, you might well hit up on a wall, and then you'll end up a dead fly on the, on the windowsill. Mm. So here's the deal. I'm all for quitting. I really am. Stop and think. Don't think that you have to keep pushing harder. Because sometimes harder isn't the way. 
Sometimes it's a little step back, some breathing room, a point of saying, I don't need to do it this way. I'm going to take a step to the left and I'm going to go that way. Each one of us is so very, very different. You all have different labels, different things that you call yourself, different ways that you do things. I knew how to do videos. About a month ago, a lady called me from Australia and she said, I've spent the last three and a half hours watching every video you made and I want to go on that journey with you. I had my first coaching client. It was something I never, ever, ever expected. But I simply did what I knew how to do and I continued just being me, just doing me. And on the days that I needed to sit on my windowsill and watch, the days that I needed to close a door or maybe open a door and see, that's what I did. It's been slow, but in November I was here and all of a sudden like a whole room of doors opened Aww. and it was huge. And now you're stuck with the choice as to which one to go down first. <laughs> but there's always somebody going, here, oh, shoot, over here, I'm waiting for you. So quit if you have to, but don't quit on yourselves. Stop, sit on your windowsill, look what you can do. Open a few doors and just be brave. Nobody's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs>